there's a, there's a woman named Ruby, and she's in Germany, and she's going to be our first speaker. Um, now, the way I'll go here is they'll either be English or Italian, whatever the person feels most comfortable with. Um, but fortunately, with, also with this new wave of technology, we'll add subtitles to the, um, to the video so people around the world can know what people are saying. So our first speaker <coughs> is Ruby. <laughs>
can't really connect to their spirituality in their daily life because they maybe they talk about God and they wonder about hmm, what's that about but and and then seeing the the experience and the the direction basically because they're yeah. kind of like wandering around and yeah I think that's like for me I would really like to share this also more like to give people answers basically so like the path is basically the answer like the movie because <laughs> like when you are out in the world especially for me I see so many questions in the eyes of the people and so many problems and you always wonder like what's happening and what can we do what can we do to make this world a better place what can we do to escape all this suffering and all this duality and like I don't know <laughs> All the sweet people who think like drinking is the best thing on the party, and like I experience just this day and talk about super things <laughs> for me at least. <laughs> and yeah, to give those people like the answer that there's more to it, and there's a goal, and there's there's some light and some joy waiting. I think this is the most important thing on the path: the joy, actually. <laughs> so. <laughs> the picture says joy, doesn't it? Okay, but I'm not done. Can I go on? Being 
bring them up into the joy and the light. I think this is, yeah, really what I would like to do, and I think what we all would like to do. So this is why I think this joy masters is awesome. <laughs> and now, thank you guys. I don't know how long I talked, <laughs> but God bless you. Nine minutes. <laughs> Exactly ten. You did exactly ten. Okay. Balloon. But does she need it? No, she doesn't. Ciao. 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 Uh, perché amo il sentiero spirituale. La prima cosa che mi è venuta in mente è perché sta cambiando completamente la mia vita, perché sta cambiando il modo in cui io approccio alla vita, il modo in cui guardo agli eventi che mi succedono tutti i giorni. Prima di arrivare sul sentiero mi sono sempre un po' vista come una, pers una persona un po' mediocre, nel senso che mi buttavo molto facilmente con entusiasmo in tantissimi progetti e altrettanto facilmente mi annoiavo e iniziavo a fare qualcos'altro di nuovo e quindi non riuscivo mai ad andare in profondità in nessuna cosa perché non ero mai interessata in nessun evento, in nessuna situazione quindi ero molto annoiata in realtà fino a che non ho iniziato a conoscere gli insegnamenti fino a che andano, e i maestri non sono entrati nella mia vita e quello che è successo è che tantissime qualità che sapevo di avere sentivo di avere ma che non sapevo come portare fuori e che non sapevo se c'era in realtà un modo di portare al di fuori di me stanno piano piano crescendo e in, li posso usare in tutto quello che faccio e la prima cosa, la prima qualità che mi sta aiutando a sviluppare il sentiero spirituale tutti gli insegnamenti è la passione ovvero questo fuoco che sentivo che prima in realtà bruciava me stessa e bruciava anche le altre persone intorno a me Ora è totalmente diretto verso un, un focus, lo sto completamente dirigendo verso il sentiero spirituale e quindi sto cercando di usare tutti gli insegnamenti per togliere tutti questi strati che non mi permettono di conoscere me stessa e di, conoscere, di vedere quella parte di Dio in me stessa, il mio più alto sé, e continuare quindi ad andare in profondità, a scavare e scavare fino a cercare di, di capire, di non avere più nulla intorno. E, di essere solo la parte migliore di me e per fare questo ho capito che ci vuole molta forza di volontà e questa è un'altra qualità che sto iniziando a sviluppare, non pensavo, non sapevo neanche cosa fosse la forza di volontà prima di arrivare qui e adesso ho tutta questa voglia di, di continuare, non, ho sempre vissuto la mia vita pensando di essere più una, una vittima delle situazioni e invece adesso mi ritrovo a voler essere un guerriero e usare proprio queste qualità per combattere, per affrontare tutte le sfide che ogni giorno mi arrivano. E un'altra qualità molto importante è soprattutto la pazienza, che sembra così distante in realtà dalla passione e dalla forza di volontà, ma che in realtà penso sia fondamentale perché, prima di tutto perché i risultati arrivano dopo un po' di tempo, dopo un duro lavoro. Infatti ho iniziato ad avere, a sentire queste cose veramente pochi mesi fa e sono qui da ormai quasi tre anni due anni e mezzo, ma anche la pazienza verso noi stessi nel saper accettare il punto dove siamo, nel saperci fermare un attimo, ascoltare, cercare di capire qual è la cosa giusta per noi in un determinato momento. Un'altra qualità fondamentale che sempre sto imparando grazie agli insegnamenti è proprio il distacco dalle situazioni della vita, cercare di fare un passo indietro quando qualcosa ti arriva di fronte, ti fa paura o ti risuona dentro in maniera molto forte, quindi fare un passettino indietro, cercare di osservare proprio con oggettività la situazione che hai di fronte e lì essere in grado di fluire o di capire cos'è la, la cosa migliore per te in quel momento, quello che ritieni essere giusto. E, e questo sta completamente cambiando me stessa, oppure non cambiando ma magari tirando fuori da me quello che è il meglio, quello che è la parte più vicina a Dio. E, dal, diciamo che dal dall'insegnamento 
più semplice, da quello che magari sembra anche più banale, dalle cose che magari pensiamo già di sapere, come da quello che leggiamo magari da qualche libricino, per esempio raccontavo a Amiti Kunjaider che mi piace leggere ogni giorno, aprire a caso un libro di Yogananda, leggere una, una frase e poi cercare di, di portare nella mia vita quotidiana questa frase, fino agli insegnamenti come il Kriya, cose un po' più, diciamo, importanti, di una certa, non so, pesantezza, come si dice, importanza. Se tutto questo si rapporta alla vita di tutti i giorni, a ogni minima cosa che noi facciamo, i risultati iniziano ad arrivare, la tua vita inizia a cambiare e inizi veramente a vivere. Quello che sta succedendo è che mi sono sentita proprio, ho iniziato a vedere come prima non vedevo e invece adesso è come se piano piano i miei occhi si stessero aprendo sempre di più ed è fantastico perché più tu apri gli occhi più vuoi continuare ad andare avanti in questo sentiero e non, non puoi fermarti, non puoi più andare indietro. E, e so, mi rendo conto che questi passi che sto facendo sono piccolissimi e quindi ho questa idea della, della vastità, posso solo immaginare a quanto in realtà posso, a quello che in realtà posso diventare, che è una cosa immensa e quindi in realtà voglio solo andare avanti, continuare a lavorare su me stessa, continuare a lavorare in questa comunità per arrivare a quello che in realtà posso solo per ora immaginare. E per concludere, probabilmente sono anche abbastanza in anticipo, però ehm, prima di, di venire qui ad Ananda, una cosa che mi piaceva tantissimo fare era uscire a fare delle passeggiate con il mio cane, e era proprio un, un momento per me, un momento di solitudine, l'unico momento dato che ho una famiglia numerosa e poi ero sempre alla ricerca di amicizie, e c'erano queste ore che passavo nei, nei boschi con il mio cane, solo io e il mio cane. E, um, era bellissimo perché ero da sola e avevo questa opportunità di guardare tutta la bellezza della natura, perché ho sempre sentito molta connessione con, con la natura. Solo che c'era questa gioia nell'osservare quanta bellezza c'è intorno a me, ma anche questa sorta di tristezza, perché vedevo il mio cane correre felice ed essere parte di questa situazione, di questo mondo così bello, così vario, e poi c'ero io, completamente distaccata da tutto questo. Mi sentivo proprio come non, che non facevo parte di questa, di questa bellezza. Sai, questo corpo ehm, così pesante, non so, quindi mi ritrovavo magari a toccare la terra o a, ad abbracciare un albero, sentire quasi di dovermi sciogliere in queste cose. Però non, non si poteva, mi sentivo anche un po' stupida perché non capivo cosa stavo facendo in realtà, magari se lì... <ride> <ride> però non funzionava. E poi, quindi questo in realtà è il regalo che mi ha fatto, il più grande regalo che mi ha fatto il sentiero spirituale di Yogananda. Darmi gli insegnamenti per sapere che questo è possibile. <ride> e che è lì dove voglio andare. Unione e questo. Basta! so much for coming and um, it's really magical to have come into this room at whatever time this morning start setting up and no one was here and I was like oh crap 
maybe I should put a note on the forum, or I meant to announce it at the party last night, and, but you're all here now. It's really beautiful. Um, so, I guess I learned two things in coming here this morning. One is that if you ever um, are blocked up and really need to, uh, you know, you're constipated and you need to go to the bathroom, just sign up for a public speaking event. <laughs> and, and, you know, you'll just, it'll really help, help your immune system. Uh, the other thing I learned this morning was definitely don't drink any caffeinated beverages well when you're public speaking, because then it makes you even more uh, <laughs> nervous. So if I start acting or talking like a squirrel on methamphetamines, you will know what's going on. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. So um, there are, I feel like I'm a person who always loves to see the whole picture. And so it was really hard to try to pick one thing, because I really thought about um, how much I love kirtan and chanting and really feeling the bliss and presence of um, mass, the masters and God. And so I was like, gosh, oh, I think about that. And then I was also like, well, then there's Kriya, like this amazing technique that actually, um, you know, it's not just talking about God or talking about spirits, but you really were given these techniques on this path to commune with spirit, to, to do something, to get in and do the work and have something to really, you know, um, advance ourselves spiritually. But um, what I wrote about is pretty much what you talked about, Ruby. <laughs> um, so we have a double talk, maybe some twin flames going on. But um, I really want to talk about divine friendship and um, that that's really sort of something I appreciate and love so much about this path. And I think other people have spoken about it too. But um, sort of the divine friendship that is established from the depth of this path. And that really this path is holistic, as Ruby said, and that it's kind of, um, it's the deep wisdom, and really this path gives a sense of uh, the true underlying nature of the whole universe and putting it together. So um, I'll kind of come around back to this, but um, I just wanted to, when I was in college, and I think I'm pretty close to Ruby's age too, so I'm coming from a lot of experience of coming from um, places where they are, you know, it's like deeply entrenched everywhere you go. I transferred from one college to another, then over here, and it's pretty much, it's a worldwide epidemic of seeking fulfillment through drugs and alcohol for young people. And um, so I just remember when I was in college and, you know, I was kind of like, well, it's really hard to connect with these people because we have a deeply seated fundamental difference of values. Basically, I'm seeking samadhi or enlightenment, and that is a pretty different, distinct value than anything else. Than any other, oh, I'm going to have this amazing job and really aspire to the top of the ladder. And it's kind of not even stated what people's goals are in life so much. Maybe they're going to school or you know, they're really good at playing the harp. Um, but it's, um, it's really completely different to be seeking samadhi and have that be your end goal than anything else. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, when I was at the same college, so I joined this fraternity slash sorority. So it was actually one that was together and usually they're apart. So if you're not familiar, it's like kind of, it's the Greek system in the schools and they're like known for drinking. And, and I think um, for me, it was really like, an investigation into like, okay, maybe there is a way to more deeply connect with people. And I think like having seen, I had this little fantasy of all the groups that, you know, they party together and then like they, they wake up and they're just all close and they're walking around the campus and they're just like such a close knit group of friends and, and kind of that was what I was seeking. And so I joined this fraternity, fraternity, <laughs> this sorority fraternity. And I mean, I remember like our initiation night. And so like what they do is they kidnap you, they throw you in a car, and then drive you all around. And then meanwhile, beforehand, they've gone, like they somehow got in my room and like took items from my room, like clothes and stuff. And then, so they like, we arrived in this place and it was actually really magical and really beautiful. And, and you get out and there's all these people with candles that are there waiting for you and they're all in white. And um, so this was kind of the first step of it. And then we went back to the like sorority fraternity house. 
And um, then they had like all our clothes on that like they got from our room. And like there was some aspect of it that I was like, wow, I want to bring this back to Ananda and do little <laughs> dorky like. <laughs> and, but even that night, it's like I remember there was like, they were all on this like staircase. And you, you have like your main mother or daughter or like you have a brother or sister, I forget the relationship, but it's kind of like they take on one of the new people and all the old members. And so <clears throat> they were just like from the stairs, like they say all this like very formal stuff of like, well you messed up on this and this trial and this and this trial. And I was just like sitting there being like, this is so superficial and pointless. And I mean, how I was like, I mean, kind of Ruby spoke to it too, but like there was nothing deep on which this was based. There was like no actual substance. It was like completely superficial. And like my mom told me once that I love this. It's like, okay, if you were really close friends because you like hold your friend's hair back as they're like throwing up after a night of intense partying, that is not really an amazing form of true friendship. <laughs> and so I think, I mean, basically, I was initiated, then like the next semester I was like, yeah, I'm really busy, I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna have to leave, like I'm done, like that is it, no, I mean, it's not, it was so not the fulfillment I was seeking, but I still want to do the fun little game things here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think, I mean, a similar experience was when I was last in Kauai, and Kauai is just like this, it's so beautiful, like seriously, when I first went there, and you see how gorgeous it is, and I would like drive with my car down, it's like my normal commute to the restaurant I was working at, and it's like, you just, this huge mountain, this blue sky, vast bay with all this perfect white sand, like mashed potato sand, we like to call it, and I, I thought of like, did I die and go to the astral world? Like, am I still alive? It's just so beautiful. But I, I think it was like the same thing that it's like when the people are, you know, you don't have that depth of connection and there, there is kind of, you know, it's like people are so still, you know, tuned into the superficial, like, like, and especially this part of Kauai, because this is like the North Shore of Kauai, this is where all the world famous surfers go, but it's not like well known. So there's like 50 foot waves and um, what's his name? Uh, I forget his name, but He's like one of the big world surfers and he's there and you're on the beach and you're a little bikini and so it's like, what does it emphasize? Well, it emphasizes like, you know, your outward appearance, your outward looks and, um, you know, it's so beautiful and paradisical and people, again, I just saw that it's like, they either, it's like so many people I saw were either like in a state of boredom, like, and, and kind of knew it and just, they're like, oh yeah, I get bored really easily. And, uh, and so like they go and drink like almost every night like to l roughly hang out with these people that it's like you just throw down like $140 like in one night on drinks and buying other people drinks. Um, or like to some, I had a friend who, um, you know, she would drink and smoke a lot, but it's like any time I was trying to like talk to her, connect with her, it's like when the story always goes back to her and it's always on this like certain level of consciousness that's not really like expansive, that's not like thinking of higher things, that's not thinking of like, you know, the greatest that I can be. And it's like, I really got the Yogananda saying environment is stronger than will. And that also so much means that I understood is the people you hang around are the people you become like. And so I saw myself becoming more and more just like, you know, like little blinders on a horse that it gets like more and more narrow of, oh, this is about me and, you know, caring about what happens in my world. And just it so much like bothered me to like, when I realized hanging out with other people like that and then seeing myself becoming like that. And um, so, yeah, let's see. Um, so, yeah, I wanted one more example. I just, there was this really amazing um, young woman who, again, just kind of like epitomized, like had everything going. Like she was an amazing surfer, really beautiful, just like this little like gangster, young, like short, really on fire. And she would go, you know, to all these parties and be the really tough one. And like later people would be like, whoa, you pulled that girl's hair? You guys got in this big cat fight? And, and there was this one party that I went to and Basically, I just like, by the end of the night, 
I like went into this one room, just wandering around, and she's like there on the floor, just like head in hands, like crying. And I mean, I just, there's this moment of really seeing how, no matter how beautiful it is outwardly, and how much you can have all the pieces together, and really, um, you know, when your life is centered around the outward form, and, um, you know, on trying to uh, gain satisfaction through the outward form, it just like ends in nothing. And so, I mean, I see, I wanted to try to give these examples um, really more so to say that, uh, like, each one of us here, it is the same thing. I think it's like, it's a desire for satisfaction and that you can achieve happiness in this world. And um, how much, if we really knew, if all of us really knew that we cannot get that satisfaction out of this world, if we really knew in our whole beings, I think within that moment or every moment, we would be seeking, some, seeking God and seeking God to the best of our ability and how much we can become distracted. It's very subtle, like those were the extreme examples of maybe seeking, seeking it outwardly. But really, if we really knew, I mean, each of us would be just on that fast track course for God, if we really knew. And um, another person that I think of with, with this is Radea. If you know Radea from the Mahabharata, he's actually, um, so the Pandavas, Arjuna, um, the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think you know them. But I know too, but I'm too nervous to remember their names. <laughs> and um, he was actually, Radea was the first, he's the eldest son, older than Yudhisthira. And so he's originally part of the Pandava family. But what happens is, upon birth, because his mother birthed him without being, you know, in a marriage technically, because she had a, a sacred mantra and she invoked the power of Surya, the sun god. And so Surya came and gave her this beautiful child who was Radea. And so, but because she wasn't in a marriage, she just had to send him on a boat down the river. And so then he actually grew up with the Kauravas. So the, you know, the, um, Bad guys. Bad guys, yeah. But <laughs> what's the, yeah, Duryodhana. So Duryodhana, king of material desire and his whole hundred other brothers, bad, you know, tendencies. And so, um, you know, even though he's a part of sort of that initial kingdom, he ends up fighting for the core of us. And so who is Radea? And Radea is actually the desire for happiness in this world. And I think that's one of the most like fascinating analogies of how there's a piece of it that's so close to home that, you know, when you feel the presence of God in meditation and, you know, what is that line of like, well, maybe you really can have bliss here, but it's not here. You know, it's still like something that's beyond here. Mm -hmm. And so, um, kind of, yeah, us seeking and helping to support each other and really finding that true happiness that's not, yeah, the desire for happiness in this world. So, um, I just want to close with a final quote by um, Kriyananda, which I really love and think of all the time. And when he said that uh, people, you know, he had people come and tell him that Ananda village is so amazing. And the people are incredible and just what amazing people are here. And he's like, yeah, you know, if it was like uh, one or two people, that would be the case. But when you have a community of 250 or of 100 or of 1,000 or of however many, you know it's not exactly the people, it's what they're doing. And so really for me, this comes back to maybe, you know, Kriya practice, or just the life we live together. And so um, I just wanted to close by saying, um, just for all, us all to really enjoy the divine friendship we have with one another. Because the more we perfect our friendship with those people we already feel a spark with, that we already feel a divine friendship with, it's actually perfecting our relationship to God and to the divine. So. I'd like to actually thank Rachel for organizing this session of Joy Masters and for organizing.
Because, of course, as it, all devotees know, we are all really extremely busy, so <laughs> nobody ever has time to do anything, but uh, somehow that one person always finds the energy to do it. And I'd like to also thank the Kalidas from the village and everyone too for organizing it there for the first time, so, so we could also organize it here. And um, one thing I, I watched, didn't have time to watch all the sessions that they did in the village, but I watched one of them. And one thing I really appreciated was not only the inspiration that they expressed and uh, devotion and even the you know the teachings that I learned a lot from them, but I really appreciated the fact that I, even though I didn't, I met actually only one person I think from the whole group that that spoke in the village, but um, through listening to their talk, I actually I felt I really got to know them. Which was, um, I felt, I felt it was really important. In fact, I, it helped me to realize how important it is, because um, like a month, like a couple of months ago, when this um, whole new generation, new wave thing started, I, I did not, I kind of knew, okay, that's really important, but I kind of didn't feel really connected, because it was, you know, they were kind of doing it in the village, and then there was this, this kind of. Um, Google chat that happened that kind of worked out all right, but it didn't work out perfect. And I was kind of just kind of feeling like, so what's that all about? But then when I saw this, uh, the joy session, the first one, I really, the joy masters, I really, um, I really felt the actual importance of it because it's really, I think it's important that um, the new souls who are coming to Ananda also do what they can to spread, spread this consciousness. And in fact, it's um, one of the, when I was thinking about what I would like to talk today about, um, one of the first things that came to mind was this actually, the feeling of being connected, the feeling of a family, the, being, the feeling of belonging somewhere, um, which seems that there's like a theme going on. <laughs> uh, and um, it made me, I, after reflecting on it, I realized that before I came on the path, most of my free time I spent in trying to run away from reality. It was, um, it was either in you know, reading novels or in playing video games or in going out and getting drunk or any number of ways to just kind of try and um, really forget what's going on. And um, what I realized is that when I came to the path, that completely changed. It was a while before I would try, in my free time, I would try to kind of push reality aside because I didn't feel there was any, anywhere I actually belonged or any, um, any group of people I could relate to. When I came here, it became the opposite. Because every, every free moment I have, I feel I want to um, I want to do something, I want to connect and I want to share the blessings I've received. And I think, I'm sure it's the same for all of us. Um, and one, um, one experience I, I always remember was when, I, um, when my wife and I went for a pilgrimage in India and we meditated in a master's attic room. Um, And uh, the feeling, it's a tough one to explain, but the feeling I got there was uh, really a feeling of uh, being home. And that, that helped me realize that, that what connects all of us and what makes us feel at home is that consciousness. And um, like also just, um, it came to my mind um, like a month ago, we went for a vacation, three week vacation to the Lake District in England and it was beautiful. It was just, the nature was stunning. It was just really like, almost like being in the astral, I guess, as close as you could get on this physical thing. And, um, and I felt completely at home. 
there and I knew that it's I knew it's nothing like I should be there or anything like that but I felt completely at home because I didn't come alone because I knew that um, you know, the gurus and Swamiji were with me. Rudra, this card has run out so can you hold one second? Yeah. every single person who lives here at Ananda has equal inspiration and uh, joy to share and uh, I think that this group is something that will um, give all of you a great opportunity to become more comfortable with speaking but also to, to share. If this is going out to, to be on the internet you're going to be touching a lot of lives and thank you all, each one of you. Um, you shared from personal experience, and you shared from the teachings, and you gave uh, a deep uh, expression of what this life of, of living Kriya Yoga is and can be. And I thank you for that, for being part of this, and for every one of you that's in this room. I was um, 19 when I got on this path, and I didn't have the friends that you all spoke about, but I had the ideals, the idealism, and so I felt that same hunger that you all spoke about, and the frustration. Plus I saw, I mean, I, many times I saw death. I was right in front of a little airplane crash once on a mountain, and I had to pull these people out of a plane. On a lake, uh, one time there's a body floating. We thought, I just, my brother who was in the boat said, well, certainly it's a dummy, you know, like a mannequin that somehow got, but it wasn't. And um, I realized there's all this duality in the world. There's the, the beautiful, but there was the, that ugliness. But, so what you all spoke about today is just so much what the world needs. And so I hope you just talk and talk and talk because <laughs> there is a message, there's a hunger, and all those people like the beautiful person who finally ends up also just as frustrated. You can have the money or the beauty or the looks. We can have everything, and the secret is, and you all spoke about it wonderfully, is that Master says it's okay to enjoy the universe, but don't become absorbed in it. And so that's the answer to duality. I was, like I said, I was young, and there was a couple who were going to be married, and they weren't going to do a ceremony. And I was already on the path, I was meditating, and I said, you can't do that. You have to have some sort of uh, spiritual focus to the beginning of your life together. You can't just go and do a legal ceremony and call it good. So they said, we won't do it unless you do it for us. And I was stupid enough to say okay. But I, I mean, I sort of had to because I made this, I made the point and then they held me to the point. I was so nervous. I mean, the, so we're in this community hall and their fam, everybody came. I mean, it was this huge, it was a big thing. And first time I'd ever spoke in front of anybody. I was so nervous, there was perspiration running <laughs> off my face. My heart was beating without the coffee that you talked about, Rachel. And it was, I was a wreck. And besides that then, not only the sweat, but uh, also <laughs> my, my nose was running. And so here I'm, I'm, I've got these couple in front of me and I've got all these people and slowly, slowly there's a big ball of a mixture of sweat from my nose and the running nose 
And I knew it was there. I could sort of see it. And I'm still trying to go about, and I'm sort of in the back of my wishing that she would just take the little thing that she had in her hand. Because I didn't want to go like this. So that's what nervousness does, because I was sort of stuck by letting this thing accumulate. Shared today without anything. I asked Swami once about nervousness in front of a, in, for, in, um, in the course of a talk, a public talk. He said, I never get nervous. And he said, uh, I said, how do you pull that off? And he said, because I talk to God. I talk to God and everybody in there. And then he said a very important thing. Nervousness still means you're thinking about yourself. And so you're not really thinking about them. You're not giving to them. You're still thinking that somehow they're going, what, what they're going to think of you. And so that's what you're